Hi everyone, welcome to this video entitled Modeling of a WPT coil using FEMS built-in leads wire. This is the outline of this presentation. We will start with an introduction. Then we will present the FEMS built-in leads wire feature. We will show how to set the problem in FEM. And finally, we will see several results to verify the correct modeling of our WPT coil. Here we have some relevant videos related to this topic. Feng number one is an introduction in which you can find information related to how to use FEM if you are not familiar with this software. In this video, Feng number five, we presented how to do time harmonic analysis using FEM. We applied this type of analysis to skin effect on wires. And this previous video, thing number eight, shows how to do the modeling of a wireless power transfer coil using FEM. I want to thank our industry medicinas, Frenetic, for their support. Frenetic is a company that uses artificial intelligence in the optimization of power converters. If you want to try their software, please do so by using the link provided in the description of this video. By doing so, you will be also supporting this channel. In the previous video of this series, we did the modeling of a wireless power transfer coil using FEM. This is the coil that we selected. Here we can see the dimensions. We have more information in this table. For example, the inductance is 5.3 microhenries, the quality factor 100 at 125 kilohertz. And below we have some other characteristics, the inductance versus the current, the temperature rise versus the current, the inductance versus the frequency, and finally, the quality factor versus the frequency. And here was the difficulty in previous video. We were not able to reproduce the behavior of the quality factor. So the point today is to investigate this further and use the built-in leads wire feature in FEM in order to calculate with more accuracy the quality factor of our WPT coil. Here we have the diagram in detail of the WPT coil, just to remember what we did in previous video. So this is going to be an axisymmetric problem in FEM, and this is the diagram that we did in FEM. So we have a ferrite plate, we have eight turns in total, this is the diameter that we have considered, and this is the value of the isolation between the terms. So here we have the axis of symmetry, and this is all that we need to implement the model in FEM. Very easy and very quick to be done. To get more information, please watch video FEM number eight. And here we have some of the results that we obtained in previous video. This is the current density at 100 kHz for the case of solid wire and for the case of what we called leads wire with 16 strands and 0.2 mm diameter. So at the end we can see that the distribution of the current density is very similar in both cases. Here, for example, we have a higher current density, then it decreases and then increases again, and this is the same situation here. The current density is high here, is smaller here, and then increases again, and so on. This is mainly due to the distribution of the magnetic flux density and the proximity effect between the different terms. So at the end we get very similar values for the series resistance, the reactance, inductance, the quality factor. In both cases the values, the resulting values are very similar using solid wires and leads wires. But from the WPT coil data sheet we should get a value of quality factor equal to 90 at 100 kilohertz. In previous video, we even tried smaller diameters. Also, even in other videos, we tried flat conductors 
but the result is the same because at the end the problem is that this is not real Leeds wire because there is no twisting between the different strands and this is fundamental to get the effect of the Leeds wire. The compensation in the distribution of the magnetic flux density in order to get rid of the proximity effect. So today we are going to try another approach which is using FEMS built-in Leeds wire and I want to thank this viewer Einstein Friar name for the suggestion for pointing this out because when we are defining a property for example here copper on the block property window we have a possibility to specify special attributes if the material is laminated or the type of wire so there is a specific option for Leeds wire and here then below we can introduce the number of strands and the diameter of each strand. Before using this option, I think that it's interesting to take a look at the manual first. If we look for the Leeds wire possibilities in the manual, we can find this information. Here we can see how to do it. One enters the number of strands and the strand diameter, but I think that the important information is this one. For AC problems, the field factor is taking into account and AC proximity and skin effect losses are taking into account via effective complex permeability and conductivity that are automatically computed for the wound region. So this is something that FEM does internally. If we read the manual, we will see that FEM does not publicly disclose the equations used to calculate the effective permeability and conductivity. And then the program uses the effective complex permeability and conductivity in the field equation. So this is the equation that the program has to solve. Here we have the effective complex permeability and the effective complex permittivity. And the program uses time harmonic analysis. So J sub S and A are the source current density and the vector potential at the different frequencies. And these are the expressions of the complex permeability and permittivity with the real parts and the imaginary parts. So here we have again the drawing of the WPT coil as we have used in previous video. This is the drawing in FEM. We have a total of eight terms and now we are going to select the diameter for the different strands of the lead wire that we are going to use and also to calculate the number of strands that we are going to have. So the total diameter that we have for each term is 1.15 millimeters and we are going to use a 0.1 millimeter diameter for the Leeds wire strands. So the total area that we have for each term is this value here, 1.04 square millimeters approximately and since the diameter of each strand is 0.1 millimeter and considering a fill factor of 0.5, the available area that we have for the lead strands is this value here, 0.52 square millimeters. So now dividing this available area by the area of each strand, we get a number of 66 strands. And here we have the complete definition of the problem. It's an axisymmetric problem in millimeters. We are going to do an analysis at 100 kilohertz. The rest of the parameters are by default. Here we have the definition of the copper. And the important part is here. We are using Leeds wire with 66 strands and with a diameter of 0.1 millimeter for each strand and then all the turns are in the same circuit turn as shown here and all of them are in series so this is going to make very easy the calculation of the total 
inductance, reactance, and resistance of the WPT coil. And here we have the results of the analysis at 100 kilohertz. We are representing here the density plot of the current density in amperes per square millimeter. We can see that the program represents the current density inside the terms as uniform. The program doesn't show exactly what is happening inside, but takes into account that we have leads wire inside each term. So now if we calculate or obtain the circuit properties, we can get here the flux over current. So this is approximately the value of the inductance, 4.66 microhenries, which is the same value that we obtained in other analysis, and this is the voltage over current, so the impedance of the circuit. From it we can get the series resistance, 30.55 milliohms, the reactance, and from the reactance and from the resistance we can get the quality factor which now is 95.97, which is much more similar to the expected value that we know from the data sheet. And here on the fan output window, we can see the current density, which is approximately 1 ampere per square millimeter. So FEM is considering that we have all the turn filled with wire, but then we have a winding fill of around 50%, which is what we have selected. We selected a fill factor of 0 0.5. Now here we have the analysis results at other frequencies, at low frequency 10 kHz. So we can see here the values, the inductance is pretty much the same, but the quality factor is lower. Then at 50 kHz, the quality factor increases 51.7. At 300 kHz, we have even a higher quality factor, 162. At 600 kHz, here the quality factor starts decreasing. 1 MHz, even lower, and 5 MHz, 39.4. So this is the behavior that we expect to have this WPT coil according to the information that we have from the data sheet. And here we have plotted the results that we have obtained from FEN on the characteristic obtained from the data sheet. So we can see how amazing is the accuracy of FEM in this calculation. So this is the point at 10 kHz, at 50 kHz, at 100 kHz, at 300 kHz, 600 kHz, 1 MHz, and 5 megahertz. So this is very good indeed. Also taking into account that we didn't know the exact parameters for example, for the diameter of the Leeds wire, we have selected 0 0.1 millimeter. Maybe it's a different value. Also, the number of strands, we have used 66. And also the diameter of the complete turn, 1.15 millimeters. These are approximate values that we obtained from the diagram of the WPT coil. So probably if we had the actual values, the accuracy could be even greater. Well, with this we get to the end of this presentation today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.